I don't believe that they are men, in my opinion. We didn't hear Satan's perspective. I don't think that's completely true. I don't want to get involved at all. Yeah. They already exist. Attraction isn't a choice. I agree with the travel man. I'm on a whole nother note, homie. I don't dislike men. There is a right and wrong way to be a man. Take a second to think about it. I think that when I originally heard the question being asked, I didn't agree with it, but men are not abusive individuals. Men are not to be cowards. Men are to lead their families. And men who do not display that, I don't believe that they are men, in my opinion. And all of the qualities that I see in my father is what I believe a man should be. All of those characteristics are what make a man. And when I see a man be a coward in the truth, in, in, in just speaking the truth, or um, sticking up for what's right, especially today in America with everything going on, I'm like, those are not men. At the end of the day, we're all men. And I don't believe there's any, any wrong way to be a man. We're just redefining what it means to be a man. But there are things that naturally come to men. So when you say we're just redefining what being a man is, you have to understand you're redefining a fabric in society that has kept the human race and got it to where it is today. So just like aimlessly throwing out, oh, well, we're just redefining what it is to be a man. That's not just like a light subject that we should be talking about. But, but why do you there think is... it has to stay the same? I'm yeah. sorry. Why do we need to have the same thing for hundreds and hundreds of years? Do you not see the state of- It's not the of... same thing. It's just, just it's said. keeping the same qualities. But do you see the state of our world today? It's not perfect. It's, no. And it's been led by men like throughout all of history and look where it's gone. So. You're, you know, we're talking about redesigning what it means to be a man. So what do you want to bring to traditional men? I think it's embracing that you can be vulnerable. I think that a lot of men want to portray strength, strength, strength. But men are people, and I know that men have feelings. Being a man and masculinity, those are two different things. And I believe that we can redefine whatever that means to anybody by including other types of men or other types of masculinity. I myself am a father, I have a child. Some people would disagree with me being a father because I am transgender. But that being said, I present to the world as male, my child sees me as a man. There's proper ways to be vulnerable, right? You don't have to break down in front of your family and cry. It's okay to suffer silence as well. Strong men, I believe, exude the qualities that you guys are referring to. I think the problem is overcorrection, right? Some people believe that men need to cry and lay on the ground and be feminine like women. I believe Satan is evil. <gasps> no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why did you why did you stop? Uh I, don't, I was trying to play it out in my head, but then I realized I don't agree with that in okay. a sense, yeah. Well, the fact that there is a, a, a Satan who is real and the fact that he is evil is, I mean, it's, it's an important, pretty central um, belief that we hold in the Christian faith and that there is a good and loving God and, and, a, and a Satan who is evil. So, <laughs> so <laughs> let's go back to Genesis, okay? God wanted to keep humans from eating the fruit of knowledge, correct? And Satan, or the serpent, wanted to give humans that knowledge. I believe that's a good action. It's a good action. That's a good action, that's justifiable. Mm -hmm. The first uh, person to advocate for equal rights. Yes. We only heard God's perspective, and from my perspective, I mean, just looking into the Bible, it's like we didn't hear Satan's perspective. Maybe he said, this is, God is a tyrannical God, and I'm going to rebel from him, and I'm going to become a fallen angel to help mankind. My interpretation and understanding of that story is, is that God created an environment where he, and it was an environment of love and peace, and, and where his children that he created and who he loved, who he created in his image would. They were naked uh, and they didn't have understanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, they would, this was an environment for them to. They're so, so babies. Uh, wait, 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 I got it. You got to hear his whole point. Uh, to flourish. <laughs> and so he puts them in this environment and he desires for them to, to 
to, to flourish and to be and to live in, in, in unashamed relationship with him and his perfection and his glory. Naked and, and, again, and, I and, see, and stupid. I see God making simple playthings because he's bored if it's mm -hmm. real then and then saying, don't do this because I don't want you on my level. And if you do, I have to make sure you can't live forever so you really don't get on my level. Would you think that if you heard that one of your friends was having a baby and, and you'd say, oh, you're just making a play thing for your... That's Depending different. Their that's different. Uh, that, but the that, but there are some yeah. parents who there use are, their absolutely. kids yeah. as their play thing. Yeah. But that's how I see the same generative love that, that out of which God created us. Um, I think for me, from um, as much knowledge as I have about Satan, I think Satan is a symbol of freedom and liberty, right? Mm -hmm. So that is not evil. Of course, like we discussed before, if people commit wrong deeds in the name of Satan, then that's wrong. For me, I was I flip-flopped a little only because I, I don't think that on his own, the devil, Satan is evil, I think yeah. it's, he's used to represent evil. Whether he does or not, he, that's what he's used for. It's like very much, his character is very much used to say like, you do something wrong, like, oh, that's an act of like the devil kind of. Anyone can become rich if you work hard enough. So I just think that anyone could become rich if they actually like believed in themselves and took the risk to actually believe in themselves, that there is some success at the end of the line of that. I feel like a lot of it comes down to mindset first and really having the belief that you can do that. I know for me, one of my biggest concerns was I didn't have any skills whatsoever and I didn't get into college. I have like a 2.0 GPA in high school. Like it was terrible. I had such bad grades, but I really turned that into a positive and I really believe this actually happened for a reason because now I could pursue something else which was real estate because I didn't require a college degree and looking back now that was the best thing that had ever happened. That's like a really sticky situation with anyone can become like rich and because I don't think that's completely yeah. true. A lot of people can if they have like connections and stuff you know but I feel like sometimes people like they work two jobs or sometimes they have other things going on. They have to pay their needs first. They don't always have like money for that, you know? Because mm -hmm. like my dad, he's like a landscape worker. He has tried making his own company and it doesn't always like work out. He has tried hard, it doesn't work. That's why I think it's like you have to have connects, you mm -hmm. know? That's why. Do you, do you well, mind if I interject? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah in, in terms of building connections, I didn't have any connections either when it comes to you know working in real estate. And what I did to make the connections is I went to open houses every single Sunday for months. And I probably met at least 50 or 60 real estate agents. And it was through that that I met one agent who was really gracious enough to say, if you want to come uh, work underneath me, I'm happy to do that. And it was really that connection, which you, you know, like you mentioned connection, that I met that person through just really kind of putting myself out there to meet people. There's a lot of institutional and systemic barriers that we aren't really talking about. If you walk into like a Beverly Hills $5 million house not speaking English, they're probably not gonna give you the like hookup. We don't tend to move within circles where those connections cross economic and socioeconomic lines. But even beyond that, I wanna say like, you took a big risk and your risk paid off. But what if your risk hadn't paid off? And that's for a lot of people who do try and start their own business or try and start their own YouTube channel. That risk doesn't pay off and there's no real safety net there. So we're not really getting an adequate side of people who have like taken that entrepreneurial risk and not been able to take it again. I'm almost worried it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy though. If you go in it fearing, oh, what am I gonna fail? And that becomes your main focus. I think more people are less likely to take risks actually needed to succeed because they're more focused on not failing, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think your beliefs create the level of action you take and the level of action you take determines your results and it is cyclical. Spanking your child is an acceptable form of punishment. What? <laughs> I don't want to get involved at all. Yeah, it's not. Do we have to? No, we don't have to do it at all. I, I don't I'm even want to stand back here. <laughs> here well, we still. don't have to, you guys don't have to participate in the conversation whatsoever. But is it going to show our position, like standing back or sitting? Yeah. We do see you guys in the background, but we just want to hear his perspective. Then people can walk forward. But if you don't want to participate in the conversation whatsoever, you don't have to. Well, yeah, so I'm kind of sad that nobody else walked forward because not only do I think it's an acceptable form of punishment, but I think it's one of the best. And the reason is, is because it's effective, it's quick, it's over, it's done, and the kid can go off and play again and not have to sit in a corner or languish in a room or something like that. And it's not about getting angry, I'm mad, I'm gonna whack my kid. No, it's about 
okay, you, made, you did something you weren't supposed to do, and you're going to get spanked for this. So I'm going to ask any of my disagreeers who wish to step forward to talk about this, please do. If you wish not to step forward, you don't have to. The, the specific anecdote I have is um, for my child is one time, like, you know, as a, as a parent, you can lose your patience, and that happens. We would just kind of, like, slap him on the hand, and we did something like, don't do that. Don't do that. And I remember one time he did something, and he started to become more self-aware, and he started hitting himself on the hand and hitting himself. And I was like, I, I can't do this. Is, I can't, I, we can't go down this path with him. This is not going to work, for, at least specifically for him. And, and it, I think it's a case-by-case -case basis, too. Like, you know, you've led your kids in a way that hopefully he doesn't lash out into the real world. I don't want him to react like that to someone else either, and I just feel like that's my responsibility. So. Yeah, and you know, I hear that op opponents to spanking will say, I don't want my child to be violent. Yeah. You know, I have five kids, 10 and under, and I, the exact opposite is true. Because do you what, think it's what, a bad memory for them? What's that? Do you think you know, that they're gonna have memories of these times being spanked and that it will be something Sure, and something I think they'll be thankful they... for it. I would do, because I, I, talk, I mean, I, know, I would I be lying if I said I never have spanked my child. Of course, okay. we, but I don't ever, I don't, don't feel good about it. Yeah. Don't you want to raise your child to not want to do things because they feel as if they'll be a better person, not because they're going to be punished for yeah, it? Yeah, both. See, this is hard for me to understand because I come from a culture where everyone, like all my friends have loving parents that spank them as kids. And now they've grown up to be great functional, well-functional adults who respect their parents and are glad their parents spank them. Okay, I'm just gonna tell, say my, my view. Mm -hmm. So, I don't spank my child, one, because of child slavery and Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. I'm a black person and I live in a world where black people are beaten all the time. I have a mother who spanked me. Mm -hmm. I do, I'm not glad that I was spanked. Mm -hmm. I respect her, but I'm not happy about that. Also the same thing with the people who are like, I was spanked, I came out great. They usually have like anger issues, they're violent, they whoop their own kids, they probably need therapy. Usually they don't even realize how emotionally fucked up they are. Well, you gotta understand, parenting is more than just, I spank or I don't spank. If you're a terrible parent and you think that spanking is gonna fix your kid, you're wrong. Step forward if you agree with the prompt. The government has no right to tell people what to do with their body. Vaccines. That's... Yeah, I don't think the government has the right to tell you what you want I'm to do. I'm step back, sorry. Okay. I stood here because of vaccines, but I know a lot of you guys probably look at me like, oh, what about abortion? Now, the thing is, when it comes to abortion, two bodies are involved. It's the woman and it's the fetus. The fetus you know, has a heartbeat, it has DNA, it should have rights. When? Life begins at conception. That's not when the heart's there. Though. Heartbeat starts at four weeks. It's not just a clump of cells, it is life. At 21 weeks, it can live outside of the womb. Abortion ends with murder and death. Over 90% of abortions happen within the first 10 weeks. That's still, I think that's not acceptable. But they still have the potential of having life though. The mortality rate of a fetus getting aborted is 100%. It's gonna die when it's aborted. And you're very but, lucky you'll never have to experience what it's like to have to make that choice. Mm. But what if, I, what, if I, what if I become a father and you know, the woman who I got pregnant you, wants to have an abortion, I, it's gonna affect me. You would have a discussion with your partner then uh, and decide what you're gonna do uh, and be glad that you have a choice of to, course, to but, even discuss with that partner. Unfortunately, human nature, if you take away the option or the right to do that, then they'll find it another way. And it will be unsafe. And uh, so would you support the mom? Would you support the mom in that scenario? If the mom had an abortion or the no, mom no, went... No, 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 if she gave birth. Oh, of course. I would support her. I'd say what you do is a good thing. And no, 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 no. Support her financially for the rest of her life or for but, the rest of the baby's life. Are you talking about, like, what, what do you mean me support her? Like, if as somebody, a citizen or... If somebody a, has a baby... There, we do have child support and it comes from taxpayer money. There's there, foster there. care, there's adoption, there's mothers waiting. Those systems are very broken and people all the time are trying to stop funding for programs like that. Now, I want to ask you guys, do you, do you support vaccine mandates? Yes. So, so I mean, you, you stepped forward and said the government shouldn't tell you what to do with your body, though. Why, why would you support? My issue is, is that I believe that the government should not be able to tell me what to do with my body, but I have to accept the consequences for the choices that I make with my body. The vaccines, for instance, I absolutely felt that everyone should get vaccinated. Why? Because this was a pandemic. But if you don't want to, I don't think the government should have to tell you that you have to. 
but you then have to suffer the consequences of your choices, By which means you cannot there. patronize certain places. You can't put other people at risk. I know, I know you're saying they're doing it to protect us, it but the, co the right coronavirus now. has, a, I think, a survivor of almost 98%, 99%, and we're mandating these vaccines. Why are we not mandating the flu? What's frightening to me is that you're equating some minor inconveniences in your privileged life to why would you uh, assume my life is privileged? But why would you assume um, my life is privileged, though? You don't know my life. Why would, I, I mean, I don't say that about you. Why would you assume my life is privileged? I'm, I'm privileged. OK, that's fine. But why, why would you assume my life is privileged? For one, you're a man. You know, most people commit suicide are men. Most people who work in dangerous workplaces are men. Most people who fight in war are men. And who set that system up? Men. Yeah. I'm going to ask the disagreeers to step forward. Well, I think I give a unique perspective on this because I actually do agree with the vaccine mandate. I think COVID was just a huge disaster, and I think it could have ended a lot sooner if things were more organized. Definitely. As far as whether the government should intervene on people's bodies, I think there are a lot of instances where the government should. One, to protect the society in general, especially in cases such as a pandemic where um, the disease could literally wipe out cities. In other instances as well, such as drug use, I think the government should intervene because when you have a society that's addicted to opioids or crack, it spreads like wildfire. And I've seen it firsthand. It's very difficult to control without the help of government. Now, on the topic of abortion, that one's, you know, very complex. And in general, I always want to favor a woman's right to choose. But I think there's also a very fundamental question that both of you brought up is um, at what point is a fetus a human or a person? Let's say a, a child is eight months in the womb. And at that point, the baby has a heart. The baby has a brain, has legs, has arms. Do you think it's OK for that to be terminated? In your nobody opinion? is doing that. And nobody is having abortions with viable fetuses unless it is a medical emergency that will kill the baby and the mother. It should be easier to immigrate into America. Um. It should be easier. The wait time should be shorter, right? Yeah. But I, I believe that it's so lengthy, not because the process is so extreme. I, I mean, personally, I think it's so lengthy because it's mismanaged. Yes. I think that, Too many like, hands in the cookie jar. Well, that too, but I think it's just like there's a way and a process that should be put in place so it's not 15 years. Let's say that they fully cooperate, right? Let's say they have everything, they have all their documents, and they're ready. Yeah, I think it should be a lot shorter. So I you're think saying it make better. it less bureaucratic? Yeah, basically. Okay. I mean, I think I would agree with that. I just feel like when it comes to Trump, you support the individual, but then the bureaucracy, the administration, all of that is so painstaking and just so inefficient and, and all of this, it doesn't really compute for me. So I think I'm Well, we've only been in there a year, right? For I me, mean, yeah. I mean, and we have so many changes that we want to make. So let's talk okay. about a couple of policy things. What about the Muslim ban or the travel ban? The travel ban to me was more of a, well, it was something it was that was created Obama's by Obama ban. anyway. <laughs> so was, but yeah. it was enacted it by was Trump. Enacted don't by don't Trump. get me wrong. Yeah. I agree with the travel ban, right? And I agree with refugees. But that's two separate things to me. So what I'm trying to say is that none of these policies that are happening are not to do with one another. They're all intertwined. When we say we support the travel ban, but we also support refugees, but we also want to like help them get vaccinations, and we also want to do this, and we also want to do Well, don't forget, we're funding the same bombs that are causing the Yemenis to have to become refugees. But there has to be a reason, right? So, that we're so it's Yemen. so it's all it's all it's all connected, right? So So like, why are we bombing Yemen? Personally, I haven't looked into Yemen. I guess I'm missing your point. It, it, refugees you support. Yes. Travel ban, Muslim ban you support. It's not uh, a Muslim ban. It's not ban, a Muslim yes. ban. I support a travel ban so we can assess who's coming in. Wait, I just think it's important to contextualize. Like you're saying, nothing sure. happens in a vacuum, yeah. right? And I think that if we start to actually connect the dots like I'm encouraging us to do, mm -hmm. then it'll become a lot more understandable. I mean, I don't believe in bombing anyone. I would like to uh, answer your question Thank about you. why we're bombing Yemen. We're not bombing Yemen, we're bombing radical jihadists in Yemen who are killing people. That's why we're bombing parts of Yemen selectively to kill people who are doing terrible, terrible things. And there's a tremendous amount of rape happening in England 
taking these little girls, grooming them mm -hmm. because they feel they have the right to do it. We don't want that here. Absolutely not. Those are things we don't want in the United States. No. And one other thing. There's that, people with predatory behavior in every. Excuse me. We, we but, don't want it but anywhere. It, we don't want it anywhere. If I could say exactly. this, and you'll yeah. get mad at me, but if I could say this, it's not baked into their religion. There are 109 passages in the Quran where people are told to kill infidels. And, and Christians and Jews. There's nothing like that in our Bible or in the Bhagavad Gita or in anything Buddha taught or any other religion I'm aware of in the world. Until people renounce those values, then they scare me. I don't think, so I haven't renounced any part of my religion in front of you, so I hope that you don't feel threatened by me. So I'm not sure what you mean by that, and I won't renounce any part of Islam. The point that I'm trying to make is that you didn't really answer the question. No, he did. He said the reason it, why we're bombing Yemen, Yemen is to save the people. Because I'm assuming that in Yemen and we've got some we bad guys in there. the reason we want a travel ban is to keep out people like that. Guys, remember, this is a video about Trump and immigrants. We're mixing too much the religion, Well, I think the when race. it comes with the travel I know, ban, Yes, 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 but you religion. shouldn't question somebody's religion. I am very religious, very religious. Sure. And I'm not putting anything about my religion in here. I'm here to talk about me as an immigrant. You guys are here to talk about Donald Trump like supporting him. Sure. And yes, I've learned a lot. Like you guys are human too. You have values. You who would have thought, you know, that we would have found <laughs> a common ground and we we wouldn't like hit each other right here, you know, because after the media portraying you guys as bad or us as terrorists, whatever. You're right. I think the media is portraying yes. us all in a different um, light. Yes. I think that we're portraying ourselves in a very different light, too. I mean, I feel very attacked just now mm -hmm. for my religion when I did come exactly. here to talk about myself as an immigrant. Yes, but that's you, what I'm saying. But you kept talking about the travel ban, it's a Muslim ban, that it's a Muslim That has to do ban. with immigration. And it's not but a Muslim ban. But what I'm trying to just say is that no one should have to explain Muslim, Christian, Jewish, none of the above, what they are to you. But Muslims continuously have to defend not only their religion, but their humanity. Jacked men are more attractive than fat men. Will the agreeers please step forward? How come there's four guys over there? <laughs> All right, we're so, so we're living in a bizarre world where people don't see the truth. Like, how is it possible that they're thinking, no, being obese and unhealthy is more attractive than being fit and healthy? How is this, how is this possible? You want to, you, actually, you know what? This is precisely why a majority of women find the majority of men as unattractive. Because a lot of guys think this way, oh, I'd just be a nice guy and girls are gonna like me. No, they're not. She's not gonna suck your dick with the same veracity when you're a fat fuck as when you're in shape. She's just not. See, people don't understand that women are aroused by one thing and they're attracted by another thing. Women are attracted to, you know, a guy that's confident, ambitious, makes money, etc. of course, right? But they're aroused by guys that have asshole tendencies, dark triad traits, etc. and guys that are physically in shape. So if you want to get the best of your woman, where she respects and admires you, while simultaneously being aroused by you so she doesn't cheat with, on you, you need to have it all. You're saying that's true for all women? A majority, a staggering majority of women. There might be 1% of the world that have there's something wrong with them that might think that, yeah, a year 600 pounds, it's so hot, I love that, but. Yeah. The hot girls, girls that you actually want, they exercise their hypergamy to the highest degree and they want guys that are fit and have their money together, have their life together. You're well, looking no. at me like you want to say something. Because yeah. <laughs> the question was, are jack men more attractive? We all walked over, are we, all, are we more yeah. attracted to jack men? Yeah, <laughs> no. well, I, I'm assuming they framed that because we're all guys here yeah. from, the, to, they mean women. Well, was, men can be attracted to if men. If I had to I mean, switch saying. teams, I'm, I'm going with the jack guy. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously this is going to be like personal biases, but I think attraction is very fluid in the sense that well, I can 100% admit like there was probably 40 pounds of muscle ago is when most women would be like attracted to me. Of course, like fitness girls, they're totally okay with the size I am, but like probably most girls, I'm like too much for. So I guess like where do we draw that line of like, I think for example, like you would be much more attractive to most women yeah. than me. Would yeah. you agree with that? I mean, that doesn't mean that like if you walked up to a girl and let's say you're not her, like you're a little bit more muscular than she would like, if you have the charm and charisma, she gonna still go with you, man. It don't matter. Like I, I have an interesting point, yeah. and and no no shade on you, but I think if you had Zach right at your, on the end, yep. If you put Zach and Greg, and you put them next to each other, and you did a poll, I think that most women would probably pick him if you had to like, because he's got the height and all that. What would you what would you guys say to that? No, 
<laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, well, we can okay. put it to no, the but test. But that's not really that's... fair. I'm 48 years old. He's a lot younger than me. He's about a foot taller than me. But you can't compare. I'm an old man. I'm 48 years old. Like, obviously, height is a big component. So that that you know, so it's not apple. You're comparing apples to oranges. But if you take the same guy, same height, etc. But one guy is fat, one guy is in good shape, she's always gonna go with the guy that's in better shape. Because I've been so surprised to see on Instagram, there'll be like guys doing like an outfit try on, like not in shape in the slightest bit. And all the comments are women like, I wish like men knew this is how we wish they looked. And like, oh, this is liars like the dream. For liars, media. liars for the media. Liars for One thing for about, clout. you can never believe what women say, man. You, 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 <laughs> Correct. You, you believe how they behave, that's, not what they that's say. That's a different episode. That's, that's all right, figure it all in. Yeah. I disagreed mostly just with the blanket statement because attraction is so subjective. I am a, a big and tall model by trade. That's what I do. I model clothing brands. I've modeled with major fashion houses. I've been on the covers of magazines. You mentioned before dad bod comments and whatnot and on social media. I was flabbergasted when I started how many people were commenting and DMing me and talking about how attractive I was, that it just kind of I don't know, showed me that attraction is a lot more subjective than I thought, and people have a much wider range of what they find attractive than specifically a body type. Is being jacked the most important trait for being attractive? I, I'd argue for guys, it'd probably be otherwise, right? I think height would be well, a very Money, important. money, yeah. height, fame, like, yeah, like what, like, what can you bring to the table? The number yeah. one thing is status, status. by status. far status. status. People also go after what they think they can get. So if this guy is six foot five and extremely attractive, and it's like, well, I can't get that guy. I, I'm attracted to the 10 on 10 supermodel, but I'm not gonna get her, so I'll be happy with the 9.9 .9 on 10. Just to be clear, are we speaking about women being attracted to men? It's not just about women. It's just about attraction. Just uh, the, what is the most attractive, in your opinion, okay. physique for a man? Okay, I'm speaking from like what women find attractive. So when, when, I, when I speak, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm anybody... sexually fluid. So my law of attraction does not adhere to anyone's standards, pretty much. I'm attracted to people in general. So you could be jacked, you could be more plus size, you could be skinny, you could be whatever it is that you are. If I'm attracted to you, I'm attracted to you. What are the traits you find most attractive? I think the way that you carry yourself is a really big thing for me. I can't date someone who lacks confidence because I feel like that seeps into other aspects of your life. Do you mind if I jump in on the confidence thing? Yeah. Okay, cool. So growing up, wasn't too confident in myself, and I gained that confidence when I started losing weight. And I noticed it was me putting myself in positions to get more opportunities with women. Right now, I'm single right now, but I'm, I'm doing okay. But the confidence came from me losing weight. So I do agree that it's a subjective kind of standpoint, but socially, I, I understand that physically fit men, that's just like what everyone's like. <laughs> That's crazy, man. <laughs> we ain't even got to get up, man. Just ask a hey. question. Before we put it down. The first time I ever seen somebody close to me pass, I was I was young. My older cousin, right in front of my mama house. Another and another black man, just just typical statistic game band. And it's like visualizing that as a young as a young boy is like that's probably one of the reasons why I am who I am today. It's traumatizing. Like, it's, it's traumatizing, and it instantly adapts you. To, to, to your community, to your environment, to where you at. Because it's like, if you don't get down like this, you gonna get down like this. I was 19 years old, man, and I had seen a lot of people get shot. But I was sitting there talking to this dude that was actually a kid, Kevin Sykes from 60s. We sitting there talking for about an hour. I'm waiting to go skating. And as soon as he crossed the street, the van pull up. They had been waiting the whole time. And they gunned him, and that's really, Fuck me up, man, to see that. They could have easily just came up and, and gunned us both. It wasn't about Cripper blood. It was just about that anger and rage. Like, man, want to hurt somebody. And man, it, it, it left something, a void in me that was like spiritual. Like, man, what is God doing? But also that rage was like, man, I want to hurt somebody. And, yeah. and, I, and I took it with me from the age of 19 and I just felt suicidal. Like I signed up every day to go out and be dead. I didn't yeah. care, I'm gonna hurt somebody, they gonna hurt me. To this day. I still think, I'm again, almost guaranteed that I'm gonna die from street violence. Are you okay like, with that though? Well, it's, Have it's, you accepted that as I, a man? I, yes, I accept it because it's like, all the negativity I done dished out. See, I wanna say I gotta get because down. this is what's causing me to, to change because I made that same pact, that same vow for my gang, that I'm gonna die for my gang, I'll do life for this shit. Yeah. But 
recent shit has showed me that, nah, I got another purpose. I could do something else. I don't mm -hmm. have to die to game banging. Let me Dude. let me ask you something real quick though. You got a child, a baby, a girl. I got, or... I got four beautiful blessings. You got beautiful four beautiful kids. blessings. So here's the yeah. thing: Would you die for them? Of course. But that's not what they want. No, that's, that's they, not they need they you to live for them, yeah. and you ready to go out every day and die for them. And them the same people need you to be alive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Damn man, I done lost. So many homies, I done lost some crib homies, I done lost some blood homies. I'm over with this game banging shit. If something happened to y'all, y'all will see that I'm so serious about this shit that I'm on a whole nother note, homie. Respect. You feel me? And I don't wanna lose y'all. If motherfuckers don't wake up and let's be save each other so it don't have to be no more losses, we gonna lose. Straight up. Today, women have I can speak from a hiring standpoint um, when it comes to things like affirmative action and there are certain roles that, that traditionally men and women have been able to serve in and now women can basically do all of those things, right? Because we've had such a, a strong uh, advocacy for equal representation in the workplace. Whereas, for example, you know, you'll never find a man as a midwife nurse. And I don't think it's appropriate. That's why there are those differences. Women in like the most important parts of uh, society have an advantage. There's a lot of positions that men simply aren't getting hired at anymore because of you know the fact that they're a man. And um, it's not just in, 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 in the workforce, it's also, I would say, you know, it's a lot easier for a woman to, to find a relationship, even if she, you know, says it's all, it's, um, finding a, the right guy is so hard, it really isn't. But uh, find, sometimes for a lot of guys, finding a girl at all is hard. If I have to consider what I wear before stepping out the house, because I don't want to draw some type of attention, I don't know how many other men have to consider, is this outfit gonna be deemed safe for me? Any situation that I have experienced where like, I physically felt endangered mm -hmm. simply because I don't wanna give my number out. It's part of that entitlement for men. You're not entitled a conversation with me. You're not entitled to my number. That aside, it's like, are you gonna, make one example of the entitlement of men when it comes to asking for your number be the all-encompassing thing that all men have a problem when it comes to approaching women. Well, firstly, it's not just an example. It's not necessarily all men. I don't dislike men. I love sports, I play video games, I have bros, I hang out with dudes. We just want men to realize that if you have friends that are having locker room talk, as a man, as an ally, please say something to your friends. Do you think repressing that is really the solution here, though? If it's in a healthy male space... There's nothing healthy I don't think that's healthy. That. I think it's There's toxic no, not, in itself. I, I mean, if you're making jokes and you're doing all of jokes that... Jokes that are harmful jokes are not healthy because they just lead to people normalizing things. People always say, oh, it's just a joke, but when someone else hears it, they don't realize how that resonates and, again, how that turns into violence. Like, this is not an isolated situation. I'm only thinking of three off the top of my head because if I think of too many, it's gonna, I'm gonna spiral so right what, now. So what's the alternative? Men shouldn't talk about these things. No, I think no men can have a healthy that. dialogue. I don't think men have to be toxic in order to have a conversation. I know plenty of men that are able to have conversations about healthy, productive, productive things, just like women are. Well, it's not obviously something that I have personally experience with, but only 1% of all people on the death row are women in this country. So when women and men commit identical crimes, women are much more likely to, for example, escape the death penalty. And that's just plain sex-based discrimination. That I agree on. That's true. Look, I'm thinking about basic needs, like around the globe, the women who don't even have like proper like sanitary like products. I mean, I have to agree. Just small things, like a tax on a box of tampons. Do you think I choose to, to do this monthly? No, trust me. So why should I have to pay taxes when this is a medical necessity? It's, we're just like dismissed. A lot of our symptoms, a lot of the things we report, especially women of color, but women across the board are just treated a lot less equally. Don't everybody rush forward. <laughs> when I, I first decided to uh, go, uh, to uh, Santa Monica Community College. I spent an hour on the campus just looking at who was there. 
And I realized that there had to be something extremely fair about it because of the diversity I was seeing. I was seeing people of every color, of every age, obviously. Uh, I was welcomed there. Nobody questioned my being too old for college. If you want to address me, you can address me as he or she or them or girl, Becky with the good hair, <laughs> or Beck. Yeah. It doesn't, as long as the term is respectful, yeah. I will take it. In 2018, for instance, only in America, there are, there are 257 million people who have a smartphone. And out of these people, 80% of people are on social media. Sure. Any one of these 80% can actually become an Instagram model. And I think that really very, a very, very small portion of people can become a fashion model. It's, it's completely different because if you take away the makeup, if you take away um, the filters, if you take away um, maybe the plastic surgery and all the retouching, see what is really at the end. You know. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. I'm running. <laughs> they, they think they are uneducated. For this. Well, they, they certainly think they're educated. And they're following um, quite a bit of you know, the university system, what we call scientism. Right, scientism. Obviously yeah. is the belief in what's, um, what's written, where we tend to be exploring um, in the field with physical properties, not theories of any kind. We're using actual measurements that are calculated not by our guidelines, but the guidelines of science as we know it. I can only hope they're uneducated as opposed to disingenuous. Well, that's the other thing too, because we know that it was on a large scale, the government has been disingenuous and they're, they're, they're pushing a narrative, right? So it's, it's hard for us. I mean, I'm sure that you've met people too. It's like, look, are you just, you haven't looked into it yet? Or are you a shill? Are you, are you part of a disinformation campaign? I don't think you guys are uneducated. I think you're wrongly educated. I think the problem with what I've seen in the flat earth crowd is that it's not that they're undereducated, but they, instead of looking at evidence and letting the evidence guide to where the ultimate conclusion is, they start with a conclusion and then they try to cherry pick evidence to support their pre-drawn conclusion. They cast away all the bits of evidence that actually is contrary to their beliefs. I, I think that you're very well educated as well as you are, are Jim. But, certainly Ali is, he's and, probably and, got the best education he, of yeah, all of he, us. <laughs> exactly, and he paid for it too. Um, but more and more uh, professionals are coming on board, they're starting to question their reality. So the thing of it is, is once you start to really look, take a hard look at the evidence, and you are, are unafraid of just standing for the truth wherever that may lead you, uh, then um, you, you, people end up becoming flat earthers.